Um, and if you look at a, a lot of laws through history, the laws that kept women from voting, they were often um, set in place with this idea of male primacy, with, with the idea that male, males were intellectually superior and that the, it's particularly the emotional um, tendencies of women made it, um, made it so that they really should not be in positions of power. And you can see those sorts of ideas come up quite often. Um, and in fact, in terms of the way our first female prime minister has been received, very often you can see these ideas of female inferiority or moral inferiority or the idea of emotions getting in the way. It seems to kind of crop up as a, as a blueprint, if you will, in the way that, uh, that people write about her. So if you see her crying because she is in Parliament passing a bill that she's really moved by, it's, you know, it's, it's seen as something quite weak or manipulative or, in fact, you know, we all know that politicians sometimes deceive us, but the only one that's ever been called Jew Liar and had liar in the, in, the, in the name, of course, is the first female prime minister. I don't think that's totally coincidental. So I think it's interesting to look at this, again, look at this background and say, we've got centuries of this belief system and really noticing when it crops up again. And um, of course, now that we know that women aren't morally inferior, I, I assure you, we need to really question these dominant narratives and I guess take part in telling the, you know, writing the new chapter. <laughs>